Chapter 3 Season 4 is here, and on the map we have 3,674 floor loot spawns, 1,380 ammo boxes, 656 slurp barrels, 299 veg boxes, and most importantly, 1,423 chests. By combining all the data of what is spawning and where, I calculated how good the loot is at each POI, and I'm going to tell you everything now so that you know which is the best location. Let's start up in the northwest with Logjam Junction. With 29 chests, 80 floor spawns, and not much else going for it, it gets a loot score of 30 out of 100. There's also no metal, the nearby grapplers no longer exist, and it has a really bad position on the map. Overall, we've probably started with the worst POI on the entire map. On the other hand, the northwest also has Rave Cave, which is a really huge POI. Adding up all the loot here gave it a score of 97, almost perfect. It has the second most chests, the second most floor spawns, and two vaults, one down below and one in the blimp. Clearly you aren't going to get the whole place to yourself very often, but even split three ways, it would be better than Logjam. It has great materials except on the blimp, and easy starts to your rotations with the various air vents. Shifty hasn't changed since last season, with the main area and the mountain remaining as it was. No more grapplers nearby, but then again, nobody has them now anyway. I had in my mind that there was a lot more loot in total there, but there really isn't a lot. There's nothing special like coolers or a vault either, so it has a loot score of 32. Its position on the map is actually not that bad, with great high ground positions available around you and not too far to get to the centre of the map, so that is a slight positive for it. In the far north we have Sleepy Sounds, which is often considered two separate POIs because it's so splittable. South Sleepy has a bit more loot with 27 chests compared to 20 in the north, but both are very weak on their own, with scores of 28 and 21 for south and north respectively, which gives a total of 49 if you get the whole place to yourself. The edge map position is awful, so far zones are a real problem, especially in stacked games. The Lustrous Lagoon is an adapted version of last season's lagoon, with the pirate ship now hovering in the air. One of the big problems with the POI this chapter has been a bad map position, but now you have balloons to fly up and get your rotation started faster. As for loot, there are 47 chests and over 100 floor spawns and a large fault, giving the POI an overall score of 56, and that puts it in the top half overall. Coney Crossroads is the smallest BOI in terms of land area. It really is just a small cluster of buildings, and in total has just 18 chests and a loot score of 26. If you remember, Logjam had a score of 31, but Coney definitely beats it because it actually has metal to farm and a fantastic mid-map position. There are also various satellite areas nearby to loot as well. The most central of all POIs, however, is Tilted Towers, although it is a close one. Tilted, as we know, is fully rebuilt now and has a huge amount of loot in total, with 69 chests and 226 floor spawns. It also has a large vault that would basically be enough loot for a duo on its own. The total loot score is 88 out of the maximum 100, with the north scoring 73 and south of the road getting a very weak 15. Don't worry, I'm going to show you every single score later so you don't have to remember as you go along. The last central location is not actually a POI, but as we know from last season, it's really good, so Loot Lake does deserve a spotlight here. All the cool boxes have gone, but there is a vault, giving it a score of 55 for the entire area. It is splittable in duos, but won't be as good as last season overall due to the lack of coolers, although it does have great metal and a perfect map position going for it. The most changed POI of the season is the Sanctuary, now known as Herald's Sanctum. The main castle has 23 chests, although there are 30 more in all the areas around it. Its loot score for the whole area is a decent 57, and that excludes the mythic AR that you can get there, as my guess is that it will be removed from comp at some point soon. The main issue will be the lack of materials, especially in the main castle. If the mythic is removed, I don't think it will be a particularly powerful new drop spot. The Joneses has been updated into a fort, although a relatively basic one. Fort Jonesy overall is not much of an improvement, and it has a loot score of 39 even with 8 cooler boxes upgrading your heals. It does have good materials, but it's lacking in any good rotation methods, so it's not got a lot going for it really. Shimmering Shrine has 22 chests and 76 floor spawns, which is the least of any POI, giving it the lowest loot score of 25. The only thing it has going for it is that it is slightly nearer the centre of the map than a few other places, but we're really clutching at straws here. And the only way this POI works well for you is if you win off spawn and manage to get the vault down towards Kondo. Talking of Kondo, you'll have seen in the thumbnail that Kondo has received a crazy makeover. 
In the north you have a Roman area, and the larger south half has got even bigger and all hovers in the air. There are 50 chests on this south side and almost 200 floor spawns, giving it a score of 61. The north side has a little less, but does have a vault to contribute and a score of 39. And that gives the entire POI the top score of 100 out of 100. It doesn't stop there though, because it also has great metal and rotation with the balloons. Last season it was a bit of a joke how poorly every EU team did out of Kondo, but it looks like that should turn around big time now. Rocky has not changed at all. The reliable location is still quite weak relatively though, with 27 chests and 85 floor spawns giving it a score of 30. The materials are particularly bad here too, with very few options to get any metal. Overall it's a really bad place if you're contested in duos, and fairly average if you aren't. There is a vault just to the north, but any team landing at the gas station is quite likely to have got it already. Likewise Tronker's speedway has not changed. It was always a good landing spot for loot, and it still is. The west with most of the buildings has loot worth 42, and east has a score of 21, giving it a total of 63, one of the highest scores around. There are two vaults nearby as a bonus, with one to the west and one in the old vault area. Moving further around the island we have Sign Up Station, where you'll find a relatively low 26 chests, which is not many considering how large the area is. 126 floor loots do give it a boost though, and a total score of 37. It also does have the advantage of great materials and rifts for rotation as well. Greasy Grove is where last season's EU FNCS champions landed, and while the scenery has changed, the loot hasn't really. 32 chests and 75 floor loots, and given the bonus of having mushrooms to help you get free shield at the start, it has a looting score of 36, which is actually not that strong. And finally we get to the reality tree, whose saplings caused havoc across the island last season. This season however, the tree is dead, but there's still plenty of loot in the area, with 48 chests if you do manage to loot all around it. So here is the table of all the scores for the POIs that I went over. Of course this doesn't mean you should all land at Kondo. The more loot there is, the more teams generally land there. You're obviously far more likely to have the smaller places uncontested. But you can see that four teams at Kondo will get around the same amount of loot each as an uncontested team at Shimmering Shrine. There's also the other things to take into account, such as materials, map position and rotation options, so this is in no way meant to be a rating of the best place to go. I also didn't go over every single landing spot on the map, there are so many other places outside POIs that you can land, and I'll be putting this map on my Discord server and adding more locations and breakdowns on it very soon. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for your support as always, and see you next time.